Thank you for that music, Sister Gigi. Amen. It's beautiful, meaningful. Your testimony was deep and heartfelt. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you, you two guys are pretty good. Uh, thank you, thank you. Man, you guys bring thank it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I guess you can come to Atlanta sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but thank you guys for having me here. I've had a good time so far. Um, I got in yesterday. Uh, Elder Beal picked me up. And uh, we had a good time together. Took me to eat. I didn't have to reach in my pocket for anything. <laughs> Order whatever I wanted. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, uh, Pastor Norwood, Dr. Norwood. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it meant a lot to me to be invited to your church here. Um, because we go, we go way back, as he's told you. Uh, I'm glad to see you guys out for church today. Uh, it was beautiful weather yesterday when I landed in Houston. It's like, yeah, this is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I got to put on my shorts today. Uh, <laughs> that won't be happening now. Um, but I'm glad to be here, and I'm sure my wife is watching. And I... Uh, when I was in the back, uh, someone says, yeah, I, I see you on Hit the Mark. Has anybody else seen Hit the Mark Sabbath School? Okay, Hit the Mark. I thought we were famous all over the world. I didn't, I thought I'd see more hands. Uh, but we do, since when the pandemic struck, we started online Sabbath School. And it's, we've done it straight for over three years. Uh, we have a following all over the world. As a matter of fact, we have such a following that last year we held a weekend retreat based on our online Sabbath school in Atlanta. We're holding another one in September where people have already registered, they've booked rooms, they're flying in um, for a weekend spiritual retreat. Pastor Freddie Russell, who I saw spoke here, is our keynote speaker for our, our Sabbath school retreat. Uh, so Hit the Mark is special. Uh, we take Sabbath school very serious. I believe, I'm biased, that the most important auxiliary in our church is Sabbath school. I'm, I'm, tell you, I'm biased. But there is no other time where we as a church body can study the Bible. And we just need a little bit more time to study the Bible. It's good to know the fundamental beliefs and know why the seven, seven days of Sabbath and that the dead are dead, but there's a lot more to the Christian walk than just knowing these fundamental beliefs. So I'm glad to be here on Super Sabbath School Day. We're going to do Sabbath School, and, and um, this afternoon we're going to have a workshop on how we can help make Sabbath School the evangelistic outthrust that it should be. Uh, Sabbath School shouldn't just be for us, but anyway... So if you're a Sabbath school follower, we're in a quarterly talking about the three angels' messages in the last days, and we're doing lesson number five. So I'm going to give you just a little ground rule. Uh, we have, who's, somebody have, I have mic assistance. I need one on this, I want to say, okay, I'll have mic assistance in just a second. I want you to feel free to say anything you want to say. Just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic over to you. Feel free to say anything that comes to your mind as long as it is short and on the topic. So like if something comes to your mind and you just got to say something, oh, I want to say something, say whatever you want. As long as it is short, and on the topic, it will be okay, okay? We won't fall out today on the Sabbath. Um, we're in uh, lesson number five, and uh, we're going to talk about the good news of the judgment. And we're going to have to figure out why would an author give the judgment a title of good news? Whoever thought that the judgment 
would be good news. But one of the words we're going to talk about today is the word results. Results. So I would just like to know, we have the mic assistants here. When you hear the word results or result, what comes to your mind? When you, when you hear that word, what, what, comes, what, what comes to your mind? What does it mean to you? Anybody? I hear an undercurrent. There's a gentleman's hand right here. When you hear the word result, there's a gentleman over there. Yes. Conclusion to some, um, some event or uh, some study or some, um, yeah, some, something that happened. Okay, a conclusion to it. Okay, I like that. There's a gentleman right here. Uh, and then Pastor Norwood, please. Yes, yes. The consequences. Consequences. Of actions. Of actions. I, I like that. I like that. Uh, there's a gentleman here. I see a gentleman back there. Yes, and then this kind sir right here. Yes, please. When I think of results, I think about you being evaluated. If something has been evaluated, yeah. then this is the outcome. Oh. We have found an audit of the system. I like that, the evaluation point. Yes, yes. Uh, right here, and then I saw a gentleman's hand back there. Yes, please. Uh, yes, so it's the, the end product of a process. Oh, that's deep. The end product of a Are you an engineer? What, what do you do? <laughs> You're not? Okay. <laughs> All right, yes, sir, please. I think of rewards. Oh, rewards. Oh, that's a positive spin on it. Okay, I, I like that. That's true. That's an excellent answer. Excellent. Anybody else? What does the word result mean to you? Anybody else? Any other thoughts on it? Because we're going to see how this plays into this whole matter of the judgment and why there should be a judgment. So our memory text is Revelation 14, one, 7. Yes. One, one more here. Uh, yes, yes, please. Yes, I see you back there. Um, results would be, uh, when I hear about that, I think about like maybe a test. A test. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it could be good or bad. Good or bad. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, please, ma'am. Uh, the consequences of the consequences of an action. Of an action, yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is perfect. This is this is perfect. We're gonna we're gonna need all of those answers in just a second. If I can get someone to read Revelation fourteen seven, uh, raise your hand. They'll get the mic over to you while we're trying to find it. Revelation chapter fourteen, verse seven, verse seven. Who will be my reader for? Me? I see your hand back there. Revelation fourteen seven. So we're gonna do a lot of reading today. So if you you have it on your phone. Get your app loaded or find a physical Bible. All right, go right ahead, ma'am. All right, New King James Version. Mm -hmm. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the spring of water. Okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you for reading that. So I'm going to ask a couple of hard questions first, and then we'll work our way back. Why do we need a judgment? That's a hard question. You better think about that one. Why, why, why is God doing this? It says the hour of his judgment has come. It's time for the judgment. Anybody got an got a idea why? 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 Yes, ma'am, right here. Yes, please. To vindicate himself. Vindicate himself. Oh. So, it's, so we're judging him? Was that, was that what you were saying? Am I putting words in your mouth? What do you think? Judgment of us shows who he is. I like that. Interesting. Yes, yes. You asked the question, why a judgment? Yes, I why? I think it gives each of us a purpose. Why do you say that? What does that mean? Well, because if, if, we, if we didn't know that there was something else, oh. why? Oh. Oh, I see. If we didn't know, we'd have to give an account one day. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now, yes. Elder Hall, I'm going to try to be quiet since I, you know, they hear from me a lot. But I like one word you said, accountability. And I'm going to leave it right there. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Why, why do you think? And I love those two answers. Why? Why? Here, here's a question. If everyone goes to heaven or hell when they die... There, there wouldn't be a judgment, right? That's just logic, right? So that's one of our best arguments why the rapture and all these things don't work. But let's see. Let's just kind of look at this judgment. 
I, I, I like what this kind lady said, that it's a vindication of God. But here's some fundamental questions we're going to have to answer today. How are we going to be judged? That's a question we need to answer. How is God going to judge me? So let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, yes, ma'am, right here, all the way up here. And then I need another volunteer to, to read something for me. So if you raise your hand, we'll get it to you. Yes, ma'am, please. I think, and I am not giving y'all a new system, but I think I'm going to be judged on what's listed in the Bible. God knows I'm not one of his doctorate brain folks. So he's not going to judge me like he would judge a doctorate. Well, what, what, what are you telling me? Uh, no, he's, he's not like that. That, that would be cold blooded. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that in the Bible, he knows, because he knows me is living in Okay, me. all right. Because he knows what he's gotten down, and he doesn't miss anybody. Okay. And even if I'm a first grader, Yes. He's got some first grading stuff in okay. there. Stuff in there. I got you. So I'm going to be judged by what in what's in here and he knows he knows that I can do it. But the main thing is do I love him enough to do it? Okay. I see where you're going. So we're going to have to kind of dig a little deeper. What, and she's leading us in the right path. What are we going to be judged on? That's, I think that's a fundamental question we have to answer. Yes, I see this gentleman's hand there, and then I see a hand over there. Yes, please. Oh, I believe uh, we're going to be judged on the things that we uh, did in life. You know, I, I believe for us who, who accepted Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is going to go on before our behalf. Okay. And, and, and we're not going to be looked on as sinners. When God looks on us, He's going to see Jesus. But for those who um, haven't accepted Jesus yes. as a Savior, God is going to see sin and all okay. those things that they did in their life. Okay. They're going to they're going to be judged on that. So you're saying I'm going to be judged because I'm one of the good people. So but tell me what I'm going to be judged on. Well, when God sees you, He's going to see Jesus. Oh. Okay, so he's not judging me on anything about me. No, no. It's those who... Uh, oh, I'm setting you up, brother. You know I'm setting you up. Go ahead and set me up. Brother. Go ahead you know I'm messing with you. I'm setting you up now. Go ahead and set Okay, me up. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I think I have a hand here, and then I'm going to come back to you in just a second. Yes, yes, please. Where was it at? I see a couple hands here. Yes, ma'am, please, his please. Law. He's going to judge... His law. What does that mean, the though? The Ten Commandments. The What's that mean? The fundamental belief. The Ten Commandments. What's that mean? He's gonna be, we're going to be judged against his law. Is his law just? Um, is his law righteous? Yes. Um, is it fair? Can yes. Can it be kept? Yes. Okay. Okay. I hear you. Oh, oh, yes, right here. Yes. Yeah. Scripture tells us that every work is going to be judged, whether it be good. So it's our work that he's going uh -oh. to judge us. Oh, the fighting word. <laughs> oh, the fight. She said... She said, I didn't say that. We're going to have to prove that. Cause she, I'm gonna make, we're going to have to prove that. You just can't say stuff like that. Uh, we're going to have to prove it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, I think that I will be judged on the love that I have for God. Love for, that you have for God. Man, that's interesting. Here's a question I wish I had time for us to answer. We have one more here. Oh, okay. Here's a question I wish I could answer. How will my love for God be demonstrated? Is it just a warm, cuddly feeling I have? Like I'm in a comfortable place? Is that, is that, what the, is that how my love for God will be judged? Oh, yes, ma'am, please, please. I think that we're all going to be judged by the way we treat people, oh. our opportunities, and our gifts, so, huh. and what we do with our gifts. So I how love we that. use our gifts how we use the opportunities to greet people, how to treat people, how to respect people, how to show people mm. the way maybe if they don't, mm. maybe they're not following God, mm -hmm. but it's 
our mission, we're all sitting here right now. Are we treating everybody the way that we should treat them? Are we showing gifts? Mm. Are we sharing our craft? Are we leading the way for a better future for our children, for the people that are living here now? Are we doing any of those things? So when we make it to him and he says, well, I saw you're able to do X, Y, and Z, yeah. but what did he do while we were here? I and look at what he did for us. He didn't like everybody he died for. But, but he didn't I, look at life. He but didn't look I, at this life. But I kept the Sabbath. What does that mean? Huh? What do you mean, what does that mean? do outside of the Sabbath. It don't matter. It does matter. But I kept the Every Sabbath. Every single day matters. You want to have a debate? I'm the debate queen. <laughs> she ran a fight. I'm the debate queen. That's why I tell everybody, don't give me the mic. Don't give me the mic. <laughs> okay. I, and, I, and I love what you said. And I think... I think we can back up from the Bible just what you said. We're going to see if the Bible backs up. I'm going to ask somebody to read some text and say, yes, ma'am, here, and then I think this you want to give a comment uh, yes, to. Sir. Yeah. All right. What did you ask? <laughs> 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 I asked, I asked, we we're talking about the judgment. I asked, what are we going to be judged on? Like, like it. Like if we all, the Bible says we're going to read a text that we all must stand before the seat of God. What is he going to judge us on? I think he's going to judge us. You say our actions? Okay. Based on, that's his job. That's his, the judgment is on his side. Yes. We keep thinking about what we have to do. Yes. But we got to remove ourselves out of this. That's not in our job description. Okay. That's to be the saying. judge is not. Yeah, yes. Okay, but earlier I asked y'all about results, stuff like that. Y'all talk about consequences. If I'm going before a judge, let's say an earthly judge, I kind of need to know what the game plan is. Like, I, I kind of need to know. So let me hear from him, and I think I can answer your question. Yes, I'm going to hear from you, yes, then so I think over here. Yes, please. So... I I think it's in the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation. Okay. There's, I forget the verse, but there speaks of two different books in reference to judgment. Revelation the 20. The book of life. Yes. yes. And the, uh, some other books. I'm not sure of the titles, but those books are referencing our deeds. We'll be judged according to our deeds. But in the book of life is the names of those people that will be saved. Okay. Not by our deeds. This is a different book, but by the grace of God. I'm going to need a volunteer to read something. Pastor, pastor, please go ahead. Who's my volunteer to read? I need you to read all the way in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to read something from the book of Ecclesiastes. I'll get to you in just a second. Yes, Pastor Norwood. Elder Hall, she kind of took my thought, Sister Dominique, but the thing is, going to church doesn't mean you're saved. We can go to church Sabbath after Sabbath and still miss the kingdom mm. of God. And what the problem is, uh, it seems to me that we can say all the right words on Sabbath. We can dress all the right yeah, way. Yeah, that's true. But we're still going to miss heaven because our hearts are not right with God. Yeah. And so when we talk about what yeah. he's going to judge, the Bible says go and sin no more. All have sinned and fallen short of the, God, of the glory of God. But I truly believe we live in a society in outside the church that we use God's grace as a credit card to keep on doing wrong. Mm. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. All right, let's, let's see what the Bible says. That's the safest bet, don't you think? Oh, you want to get something at first? Yes, please. I just have a question. Yes. Because Jesus told the thief on the cross, Yes. I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Yes. So my question is, what is the thief on the cross going to be judged. Okay. Be great judged? question. We'll see if we can answer that. Great question. Great question. Do you want to answer that or you want to talk talk about what we're, where, where, where are we going now? Okay. Uh, you're going to read what the Bible says. Where are you, you, where are you going to... Uh, what is it? Revelation 20. Verse 12. From 12. Please read that and then she's going to read a text from me. What is Revelation 20 verse... Let's give everybody a second to get there if you don't have it. Put, open up your Bible to Revelation 20. Hold on one second. Let me find that myself. Revelation 20. And verse 12. Go right ahead, please. 
And I saw the dead, great and great and small standing before the throne. And the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done and in in, as recorded in the books. Mm. The sea gave up the dead and that were in it, and the dead and hate gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according what he had done. According to, and in the King James Version, it says, according to their works. Okay, so we're getting a little clarity. You're going to read Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 12. Let me see if I can find that. Let's tuck down here by Psalm someplace. Chapter 12, uh, verse 14. And one second, let me, I'm almost there. All right, go right ahead. And the Bible says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. It sounds like in the judgment, we're going to be judged by our works. Yeah, that's what you said. Good, good, good or bad, yeah. But it sounds like what we have done, as she said, is what we're going to have a given account of. Let's see if we can prove that. We got we to back some of this up some more. I, can, I just can't say that. Uh, I need another volunteer to read. Um, I want one more text to read just to kind of give us a foundation. Ephesians 2. Who's my reader? Who's my reader? All right, right here, right here, all right. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's just read one more verse here, and then, uh, and then let's just see what it looks like in reality. Ephesians chapter 2. Let me, let me get there. And I want you to read verses. Oh, this is a hard one here. Oh, my. I might have bit off more like a chew here. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, mm. lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Mm. All right, so what is this saying? Mm. Tell me in your own words. What do you... What do you think what she just read is telling us? What, what do you think what she just read might be telling us, might be suggesting? Anybody want to go out on a limb? That's a tough, those are some tough verses, I know. I was, I was going to say, don't be scared. <laughs> yes, what, what do you think those verses are telling us? I, I believe that Scripture is telling us that uh, we shouldn't think that if I do good, I'm going to be saved. Mm -hmm. We should, because we are saved, mm -hmm. we should do good. I like that. Oh, I like that. There's a, there's a text, something, there's, uh, you can find it later. It says, show me your works without your faith or something like that, and I'll show you my faith. By my works. Uh, there's a text. We'll find it someplace. Yes, ma'am. Please, please. I just wanted to read a little bit from the Amplified Bible. Please. Just mm -hmm. more. It says, um, for it is by grace, which is God's remarkable, mar remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves not through your own effort, mm -hmm. but it is the undeserved, gracious gift of God, not a, as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that, you, so that no one will be able to boast it or take credit in any way for his salvation. Mm. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in Christ Jesus 
reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. Beautiful. I love the way they did it. Elder Hall, can you repeat the original question? <laughs> well, the, the original question, of course, I want to know what this text was saying, is what are we going to be judged on? I think, I think it behooves us as people who have, quote, unquote, given our lives to God to understand the rules of the game. I just think, I think it would make sense to know, to not guess, to not guess, wh am I, what am I judged on? How, how, is it because I'm a nice person? There's a lot of nice people. I, I, I think I just need to know. And, of course, on something that's important, the Bible will give us light. The, God is not going to leave us in the dark on something so vital for our salvation. All the way in the corner, yes. Did you have a comment? Um, yeah, I just wanted to summarize okay. Ephesians 2, 8, 10. All right. To, 10. to me, it just said we are saved by his grace for good works. Okay. That's it. We are saved to do good works. Listen, listen this is not a new question. I'm going to read something from uh, Luke. Luke, my favorite author, Luke chapter 10. So you want to turn there with me. Uh, this is another familiar story. But this is not a new question. This is not a new discussion. But in Luke chapter 10, I'm going to go, I'm going to start reading at verse 25. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Here's how it reads. And behold, a lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, listen, to me, this is a, this is a perfect question. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this, this is a good question. This, if I'm going to talk to Jesus, I got one chance to talk to him, I think this is a pretty good question. Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? That's the question that all of us should be asking. Right. So Jesus tells this man, just like the lady said earlier, what is written in the law? How do you read it? So the man answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Listen, when Jesus is talking, we weren't there. But I know when the man heard Jesus' words, they penetrated his heart. He heard the conviction in Jesus' words. When Jesus said these little words to him, that's why the response is the way it is. Here's what happened. Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. There's a dynamic going on here that we don't really understand, but the dynamic is that the Jews hated the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me be careful now. Let me be careful. The Jews hated the Samaritans like the Republicans hate the Democrats. <laughs> like the blacks hate the whites and the whites hate the blacks. And the blacks hate the islanders, and the islanders hate the blacks. <laughs> religious people. He's talking to religious people. This is, this, he's not talking to, to the Gentiles. This is a religious leader who's asking Jesus the right question, but when Jesus gives the answer, he's convicted. So in, to, to, to take, the, to take the, 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 the glaze off of him and just kind of get past this uncomfortable, he says, well, well who was my neighbor? I, 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 this is uncomfortable for me. Well, who was my neighbor? 
So Jesus tells this story that we all know. He tells the story of the Good Samaritan. Y'all know the story. I'm just going to summarize just in case somebody didn't know the story, that somebody was going someplace and got beat down. You know the story? Got beat down, left on the ground, robbed, beat down. And the Bible says, oh, it's painful. It's painful because this is a story that everybody knew who was listening to it. Oh, it's a painful story. I'm going to just read it anyway. And verse 30, and Jesus' answer said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Mm -mm, not today. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came he, he, I could just picture he came and he, he even came up to the man and looked at him. I, I don't want to get involved. I just, I, I, I just can't get involved. I just got too much of my life going on. I can't get involved in this man's drama. No worries. Verse 33. It says, but a certain... Samaritan. This is who the Jews hated. They hate Samaritans. Despise them. But when a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had what? What's the word there? He had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in his oil and wine, <coughs> pouring in his oil and wine, and set him set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave to the host and said unto him, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Now Jesus is now about to deliver the punchline. I'm sure he's looking at the man, not with ridicule. I'm sure he's looking at him with love, compassion, and hope that he would hear these words. Which now of these three thinkest thou? Now, not what I say. Who do you think was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And, 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 the, and the Jewish man couldn't even say the word Samaritan. He couldn't, even, he couldn't bring his mind to say it. He just says, he that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him. Let's just back up a second. The original question is, what do I need to do to be saved? Jesus ends the discourse by saying, go do likewise. You want to be saved? Go do likewise. I know in Matthew 25, if we have time, maybe I'll read it. In Matthew 25, Jesus is talking about the end of the world. This is something that always consumes our minds. The end of the world, and Jesus makes this statement that, that when he comes... There's going to be separated into two camps, like the sheep and the goats. Just two, not three, not five, not seven, just two. Let's go to Matthew 25. Oh, I see a look on someone's face. I don't know why they have that <laughs> look. I'm going to find out in a second. I see you. We're going to go to Matthew 25, and I just want to read this right here. Matthew 25. I'm going to start reading at verse 31. We're talking about judgment this week in Sabbath school. What are we going to be judged on? Jesus is now just giving us a high bird's view. Verse 31 says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory... And all the holy angels, I think, I think there was John the Revelator or, or Daniel, there was, there was thousands times, thousands and ten thousands. There were so many angels, he couldn't count them. He just says there were thousands upon thousands and tens of thousands. All heaven was evacuated for this big event. But the Bible says, the Bible says he's going to gather at verse 32. Uh, 
and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Oh, that's what I want to hear. I want to be in that group. I got to be in that group. That's the right group. And here's what it says, verse 35, oh my gracious, verse 35 says, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall, then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, we don't even remember doing this. You know why they don't remember doing it? Because that was their lifestyle. That wasn't a special event. It wasn't a church initiative they're talking about. It wasn't each one region. This was how they lived their life. They just help people. That's what Jesus did as he walked this earth. All he did was help people. He healed and he helped. He healed and he helped. And he healed and he helped. And he said, let this mind be in you. The church was organized for service. That's why we're in church. I know, listen, listen, I like the music. I like the preaching. I like the, the potlucks. I like all that. But the church was organized for service. When we join a church, we join up. I, Lord, you've done so much for me. I want to be a part of this group that's doing something for you. But then there's another group in the Bible that unfortunately are listed here as well. Verse 41 starts. It says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered. You were just too busy. You had too much going on. You needed your money. You, 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 you don't have the, you know, the stuff you want to buy. You ain't got money to be given to people. There's some stuff you want. I was hungry. You would not let me come in your house. You only let your people come in the house. You weren't going to feed me. Jesus went so far to say, listen, when you prepare a feast, he told us, he gave us the prescription. He says, when you prepare a feast, don't call those to the feast who can call you to a feast. Y'all, am I lying? Or is that in the Bible? He was so radical. He says, when you have a feast, I want you to call the people who could never invite you to their house. That's how radical Jesus was about his love. Oh, man, okay, okay. I'm just, I'm reminiscing to the old days. I'm looking at my mother in the kitchen, and we brought people home from church on Sabbath who are friends today simply because we shared a meal at the table. <laughs> in the old days, in the old days, you couldn't go to a church without somebody saying, come home with me. In the old days. Now we say, man, you should have came next week. We were going to have a potluck. <laughs> you missed a pot. Man, if you had just come next week. <laughs> no. No. In the old days, your house didn't have to be all that. I don't, you could be in a shack. You were taking somebody home. We, we got we, to. So, oh, Lord, help me. I'm just I'm going off on a tangent. I told you all y'all couldn't talk long, and now I'm talking long. <laughs> Here's the good news. Here's the good. I gotta give. I gotta give you some good news. I gotta give you some good news. That's from 1 John two one. 
It's in 1 John 2, 1. Let me, let me see if I can find that. I think that's right before Revelation. I think I can find that. 1 John chapter 2. Listen, in the judgment, everyone saved is going to be saved by grace. Amen. There, won't be, there won't be you did good stuff out par, outside of Jesus. That's, that's not how it works. We're all going to be saved by grace. But as he saves us, he changes us. And as he changes us, he increases our love. And as he increases our love, the more we want to do for others. I can't manufacture that on my own. On my own, I'm selfish. I'm just being honest. On my own, I don't want to be bothered. All of us are like that. That is why Christianity is so radical. Because now, instead of living for ourselves, we're living for other people. Listen, the Bible says, oh, I got I to just get this out and then we're going to close. The Bible says, by this, oh, I got to paraphrase that. The Bible did not say by the amount of your churches, the amount of your institutions, the amount of your medical facilities, the amount of your pastors, the amount of your tithe, the amount of whatever you have, people will know that you're my people. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, by this shall all men know that you are disciples, by how you love each other. It's going to be so radical that they know that's God. Mm -hmm. Right. Acts chapter 2 is when the early church blew up. The church just blew up. Thousands were added in a day. And it all came down to how they loved each other. If you didn't have, we made sure you had. Because it cost to be a disciple then. Now it's cool to be a disciple. You can wear a cross and do all kind of stuff. It's just cool to be a Christian. Back then it cost something. They would lose their jobs, their houses, their employment. But as they had need, they all came together and the church blew up. Man, we need to get back to those days. Oh, I got to wind this down. I was, in, I was in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My little children, these things write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Someone is advocating for you and I. You remember the story? I just want, I think I want to close with this. Jesus is talking to his disciples. It's getting down toward the end of his time that he has with them. And he, and he turns to Peter and he says, Peter, I prayed for you. You know, we read about Jesus spending all night in prayer. It's like, what was he doing? He's letting us in on some of the stuff he's praying about. Peter, I prayed for you that your faith won't fail, that when it, when it gets heated and hot, that you won't fail because Satan is after you, Peter. But I want you to know I'm praying for you. And then in his prophetic words, he said, now listen, Peter didn't understand what all this meant, but Jesus is speaking into his future. I have something for you to do on the other side, Peter. <laughs> it ain't going to work out like you think it's going to work out. Right now, you're big and bad, and you say, I'll never leave you. I'll never deny you. Jesus knew. But he didn't throw Peter away. That's the kind of God we serve. Like he's prayed for Peter, he's praying for you. And he's praying for you. That's a good God. We need somebody praying for us. Lord, help me. Lord, help my unbelief. Make me willing just to be willing. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. I think that's in his name. No doubt. God is calling someone today. 
someone today he is calling specifically, saying, I want you to come up higher. I just want you to come up higher in your experience. I want you to trust me. I want you to love me. And let me do what I want to do with your life. I think that person is here. And if you're here, why don't you join me down here so we can pray together. If God is calling you to a higher level, why don't you join me down here so we can pray together. Is there another? Is there anybody else to say yes, Lord, today? I hear your voice calling me. Is there another? I see you. I see you. Is there another? Here's God's voice. You feel it. You know he's speaking to you. Won't you tell him yes today? pray for us. Just pray we say yes. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come before you at this moment to say thank you. Thank you for allowing your spirit to be in this place. Lord, we thank you for the way that your spirit moves from heart to heart, from breast to breast, to encourage us to do just what is being sung right now, and that is to surrender our lives to thee. Oh, Father, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. We thank you, Lord, for the response to the appeal that has been given. And, Lord, you've seen these dear, precious souls who have come down front to publicly acknowledge their desire to surrender to you. Oh, Father, we know that heaven rejoices when decisions such as these are being made. And I pray, Lord, that as we have seen the courage of those who have come down front, may each of our hearts be pricked to do whatever it takes to follow you all the way. Lord, as these souls have come down front, you know the desires of their heart. And we're praying, Lord, that you would grant it in accordance to your divine wisdom. Lord, for a closer walk with thee, that's what we all desire. So let your will and your way be done. And Lord, we'll always give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you so much for leaving no stone unturned that we might be saved. And Father, as we have studied the judgment, discussed the judgment today, I'm just reminded of something that was said in the Sabbath school. It says the purpose of the judgment was not to show how bad we are, but to reveal how good you are. And so, Father, we just thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Continue to have your way, and we'll be careful to give you the praise because you are worthy. 
you are worthy of all praise. So thank you for these dear souls that have come down front, sealed their decisions, and when it's all said and done, give us a place in your kingdom. This is our prayer, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, let everyone say, Amen and Amen.